Thank you, Lord. This is a, it's about you. Jesus, it's all about you. And uh, where would we be today if it wasn't for you? Lord, I, I'd hate to be able to see the pictures of where my life would be if you did not intervene with your love. And we just thank you, Lord, that we're all sitting in this place this morning, Lord, because of you. And um, you've touched our hearts in such a myriad way, Lord, and we give you glory. We pray, Father, this morning that you would do something in our hearts today. Do more, Lord, in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, yeah, so I went away. Oh, I, I, the people that, that were on the art course with me, it was a secular uh, art course. It wasn't a Christian art course. Um, I, so I made friends with those people. So I just want to say hello to my Vancouver friends because they, they want to watch the videos. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so anyway, Georgia, Georgia asked me while I, was, while I was away, kind of like towards the end of my stay um, in Vancouver, she says, so what has the Lord been speaking to you about? And, um, and that's what I want to speak about this morning. It's just, just, it's not a profound word, but it's something that I feel I need to be reminded of constantly, and I need to just know, know about it. And I, all the Lord spoke to me about the whole time I was away is be thankful. Wow. Just be thankful. And, um, and that was just the, the God's word to me uh, over the time that I was away. And it, was, it wasn't a big challenge. <laughs> I mean, I was being blessed. But the Lord was just saying, I just need to keep, to ha- keep having a thankful heart, keep thanking Him, and seeing things from a different perspective. And so, um, so yeah, at, at the end of the trip, so as I said, it was an intense course. I was exhausted by the end of this intense course because you don't sit at all. I think I got... You, about 40 minutes, um, if that, lunchtime where I could sit. Um, but it was just standing constantly all day um, and painting and painting and painting. But um, so at the end of it, my cousin and her husband said, we want to take you away to Whistler um, up in the mountains and show you the mountains. I really wanted to see the lakes. I wanted to see the mountains. I wanted to see the, I wanted to see the nature of Vancouver because it's just such a stunning place. And um, so anyway... Just before we were le- going to leave, the weather changed completely, and um, it just started raining and raining and raining, and um, and I thought, you know, here was this intense two weeks that I've been waiting just to get a, a time so I can enjoy Vancouver, you know, the area, and it's raining and it's like mist, you know. So those who are from that area know what the rain is like, and um, so anyway, I started sort of like grumbling on the inside of me. And, um, and so my cousin and they were constantly on the sort of Google uh, weather and seeing what the weather is going to be like. And they said, oh, no, tomorrow is going to be 2% chance of rain, just 2% chance. Anyway, we got there, and it just rained and rained and rained. And it was just thick mist that you could hardly see anything. And, um, and so anyway, the Lord just kept on saying to me, just be thankful, just be thankful. And so I... So I just said to the Lord, Lord, thank you that I'm in a place here where I can just rest. It's beautiful. Even though it's raining, I want to thank you for the rain. I want to thank you for what's going on around. And, um, and so, yeah, that day we had bought gondola tickets to go all up the peaks, the highest peaks and the cross from peak to peak. And so we, were gonna, we had planned this whole thing of where we were going to go with these gondola tickets. And, um, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to see anything because of the thick mist. But anyway, we, off we went, and um, it was stunningly beautiful because of the mist. Um, and the next day, the weather changed completely. But that day was far more beautiful than the clear day. Um, and, and my whole perspective changed as I saw that. And the whole time I was just saying to the Lord, okay, I'm just going to be thankful. I want to thank you just that I'm here. I'm here. I'm enjoying something that you've provided for me. And you know, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 says, be joyful always. We want to know the will of God. It says, be joyful always. Do you want to know the will of God? It says, be joyful always. Be joyful always. Say that. Be joyful always. All right, you've just declared the will of God. Be joyful always. Speak it over your heart. Be joyful always. Pray continuously. You want to know the will of God? Pray continuously. Want to know the will of God? 
pray continuously. All right. So we've got two things there. And then the third thing is give thanks, to, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. And so here was this challenge. I know it's not. I mean, I wasn't struggling with life and death issues. I was struggling with the weather. <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, it was, a, it was just this challenge about being grateful, being thankful to the Lord. And, and um, you know, what I've got, you see, what we've got to realize, first of all, is solidify this in your mind, is that God is good. God is good. You know, Yes, God is good all the time. And you know, He's taken punishment away. There's no punishment for you. And, you know, Philip came up earlier and he said, you know that sometimes you feel that you've got that like, guilt feeling, you know. Sometimes we do. We've got the sense of, some. I feel guilty about something. Now, you know, the thing is, if you don't know what it really is, it's just the heaviness of the enemy over your life. But if you know what it is, you're able to repent of it. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you something. It's okay. Repent of that. But if you, if you just have this heaviness, that's the enemy. God has removed all punishment. He, uh, Jesus satisfied all that is required completely. So I've got to recognize, first of all, God is good. God is good. God is good to me. God loves me. God's intention for me is just a heart of goodness. I've got to solidify that in my heart. I'm not a lab rat. I'm not God's experiment. I'm not there to see. I want to see how he copes under this situation. And squeeze me a bit more. Squeeze me a bit more. Just to see how I cope. That's not the heart of God. Okay? That's not his intention. I'm not his lab rat. I'm his son. Amen. And he loves me. I've got to solidify that in my heart. Secondly, the scripture says that in all circumstances, give thanks to the Lord. It doesn't say give thanks for, for the circumstances. In the circumstances, I give thanks to the Lord. You see, I think it's, it's something like the Garden of Eden when, Sa when, when, when Satan tempted um, uh, Adam and Eve there in the Garden. He, he had no power unless they gave it to him. Amen. Amen. God gave them a garden. God gave them a garden of trees of all kinds of fruit-bearing fruit bearing trees. They were in that garden. I mean, I, you can only imagine how beautiful that garden must have been. Amen. That was garden, God's garden for them. There was just one thing that they, they weren't allowed. But what happens is for us, we focus on what we don't have instead of what we do have. We focus on that one thing that I want instead of... All that God has provided. There is so much I can be thankful for. And to stop focusing on the thing that I don't have, but to focus on the thing that I do have and start being grateful and thankful for all that God has, has positioned around my life. Amen. And that what it, that's what it reminds me of. Um, Jesus is worthy of it all. He's worthy of my gratefulness. He's worthy of me just constantly giving thanks to him. See, God doesn't take you where he doesn't want to go. That's what I've preached on before. God doesn't take you into a circumstance or into a situation where he himself doesn't want to go. He wants to be present where you are. He wants to be present in your circumstances. He wants to be present in everything that you are going through so that he can manifest himself there. Remember, the battle belongs to the Lord. Who does the battle belong to? The Lord. the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is not mine. What is mine? The victory. Amen. Amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. The victory is mine. And, and, and you look right through history. What were the spoils for? For God's people. You are meant to go in after the battle of the Lord and just glean the spoils of the Lord. Take back what is yours. Take back what God has made available to you. Amen? Amen? And so that's what God wants. Is he wants us to walk in his victory. He wants, to, wants us to walk in that where we glean the spoils. Remember, Jesus was in the desert for those 40 days. And it wasn't so that God can hand him over to Satan to see how well he does under Satan's temptation. No, it was to establish his sonship. For him to have a revelation that he's a son. 
And that he can in that place acknowledge and recognize that all that is the Father's is his. The inheritance of a son. All right? Anything that Satan tried to offer, anything that Satan tried to tempt him into, he didn't have any need of it because all that was the Father's was his. Amen. And that's the revelation we've got to have. I've got to go through life circumstances. I've got to go, th- go through things having a revelation that all that is the Lord's is mine. I'm a son. I'm a son. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I was coming down those mountains in those gondola cable cars coming down. Some of them were closed. Some of them were open. Um, some of them were pretty scary because you were like just dangling in the middle of very, very high spaces. But I'm coming down in those cable cars and I was sitting next to my aunt who is my godmother um, who was the one who prayed and prayed and prayed for my life when I was young. So it was just a miracle that I was sitting there with her. And together we could sit in that cable car and just look over everything and say, God has given this to us. God has given all this. And at that point the clouds just started lifting As the clouds lifted, it sort of separated these snow-peaked mountains, the clouds, and then just this this, um, town underneath. It was just way beneath. And it was just sitting there just saying, God has given this to me. And it was just, just enjoying the beauty of the Lord. Therefore, my joy and my thankfulness has got nothing to do with my circumstances. Amen. My joy... And my thankfulness has got nothing to do with my circumstances. But it has got everything to do with the, good, with the strength that I get from the good God within me. Amen. That God is good. He is in me. And I'm strengthened by His goodness for my life. That He is good to me. And His intention is good for me. Amen. And so God becomes the overflow. When I'm thankful, when I'm grateful, God becomes the overflow. The goodness of God suddenly overflows. Suddenly there's a release of the goodness of God. In the midst of that weather, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Um, My perspective changed and suddenly I saw a different picture. You know, sometimes the weather does not change. But my perspective does. And that was a wonderful day. Because the next day was what we would call a beautiful day. <laughs> it was sunny. And, um, and you could see everything. And the, int- and the amazing thing was, our tickets, which we only found out then, were valid for two days. You bought a one-day ticket and you could use it the next day again. So we did the whole thing all over again <laughs> with the sunshine. And that was just God just saying, see what it looked like in the sunshine? But I wanted you to enjoy what it looked like with all that mystery and the mist around. So it was absolutely beautiful. We got it all over again. And, got, and we could go all over again and say, this is all mine. This is all mine. God, God had come through from the inside out. Do you see that? God had come through from the inside out. My perspective changed. And God came through. It's weird. I saw the goodness of God. And it's because I saw the goodness of God, He was made manifest in my situation. Do you understand that? I saw the goodness of God. And when you see the goodness of God, He manifests Himself. In a situation. And that's when you become thankful. That's when you are thankful. He takes you there so that he can be there. He takes you there. And in that place, you are grateful. You are thankful. He takes you there so that he can manifest himself in that place that you are in. Isn't that amazing? See, when I'm thankful, what happens? When I'm, I see, I, there's, there's, it's powerful to be thankful. 
When I'm thankful, what happens? A portal opens. A portal opens for the manifestation of God in that place. See, um, in, in James 4 verse 6, God says he opposes the pride, but he gives what to the, to the humble? Grace. Humility basically really is, I need God. Pride is, I don't need God. Okay. When I'm humble, I acknowledge that I need God. And so I'm in a thankful place. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I, I'm in a place of receiving. And that's when God can pour out His grace, unmerited favor on my life. God gives grace to the humble, but opposes the proud. I stop up the goodness of God when I'm in a place of self-reliance. When I'm in a place where I don't need God, I can provide for myself. But when I'm in a place where I'm thankful because I'm thankful for everything that God gives me, what happens is I open a portal for the grace of God, for the unmerited favor of God to be poured out. What is grace? Gift. Gift. Things come. Things, come. things open up. Things manifest when I'm thankful. So in my place of thankfulness, I can release and I can, re- and I can receive and I can release the presence of God. And the grace of God is made manifest. I was, I was, I was thinking about um, the, the, the story of the five loaves and the, and the two fish, where there was this multitude to feed. And, um, and so the little boy comes up with his... Five loaves and his two fish. Now, how would we react normally in a situation like that where we see 5,000 people that, that need feeding and we say, has anybody got anything to give? And a little boy steps forward and my, the way I would react is, gosh, there's one person out of a multitude of people who's willing to give. The rest aren't. That's how I would say it. I'd say, there it is again. Just one person is willing to step out and do something while the rest will just watch. Okay, that's... <laughs> Instead, Jesus looks at what is available, he receives what is available, and he gives thanks. Isn't that amazing? Now, I could look at that and say, what am I going to do with that? Hey, this, this is mingy. God. (laughs) But he gives thanks for what is available, for what is in hand, for what is right there. He begins to give thanks for it. And it multiplies. It multiplies. Hallelujah. So next time you open your cupboard and you say, what am I going to wear? Give thanks for what's in your cupboard. Amen. And you open your fridge and say, what am I going to eat? I think God will just release some creativity there to use whatever is in the fridge there. Start giving thanks for what's there. Amen. It's being grateful, thankful, so that God can be manifest in that situation and he can multiply what is in hand, what is available there, because of a grateful, thankful heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I think when Jesus must have saw, seen the five loaves and the two fish, he must have thought, thought, five. Five means fruitful, creative. Two means inheritance, family. He must have thought, yeah. He was reminded at that point, five is creative, fruitfulness. Two is inheritance. I'm family. I'm a son. Right? You see, I think God uses just anything just to encourage us. Just to encourage us. Just to remind you at that point, look what can be done because you're a son. And it's all available to you. All that is mine is yours. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. And I'm just going to pray that God will shift our perspective this morning. And that... We will, we will look at things differently. 
and that God will just release a thankful, thankful heart on the inside of us. Father, we love you. We love you, Father. And as we are singing this morning, it's all about you. It's all about you and it's not the circumstance, Lord, because you make all things beautiful. You make all things beautiful. And so, Father, I want to pray this morning, Lord, that this is a word that you, you would inscribe on our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you'll engrave it on our hearts and that we will not forget it. And that, Father, that we will walk in gratitude. Lord, just like Paul and Silas, Lord, thrown in prison, we'll choose to praise you. We'll choose to glorify you. We'll choose to say, you make all things beautiful. So that, Father, you can be made manifest in that place. That you can shake the very foundations of the circumstance and let your glory shine through. And so, Father, we are, Lord, Lord, not for the sake of circumstance cha changing, but, Lord, for the sake of our hearts changing. We want to be thankful. And I pray, God, that you would change our perspective today. And, Lord... Your will is that we will be joyful always, that we will pray continuously, and that we will give thanks in all circumstances. For this is your will for our lives in Christ Jesus. Amen.